Okay, on the show now. Um, it's come to the time of the year we have uh, people getting their Barbies out. So joining me now, I have TV presenter Simon Rimmer. Uh, welcome to the show, Simon. Great to have you on Thank board. you very much. And uh, can you tell me and the listener, how can we have seen a great British comeback from the barbecue? Well, I think we've always loved the barbecue, but I think we've had a bit of a kind of a bit of a fearful relationship with it, where it would be you buy a barbecue, you'd use it a couple of times over the summer, you'd badly burn some sausages on the outside, they'd be raw in the middle, you give people food poisoning, then you'd stick it back in the garage for 12 months, bring it back out again, use it four days, and away we go. But I think it's changing. I think that um, as we use our outside spaces more, and COVID has helped with that, I think that what's happening is we're using our barbecue. Like, you know what? You can do so much more than just burgers and sausages on it. And technology is moving forward at an incredible rate of knots to make sure barbecue and it is kind of is right up there with, with, with the highest level of cookers, really. Yeah, that's great. We're going to touch uh, briefly on uh, some of the foods uh, which are becoming, uh, I guess, uh, popular. And uh, you mentioned lockdown. Has that mean people have been more creative and improved their culinary and grilling skills? I think definitely. I think that lockdown means that we go, OK, listen, I've got a bit of time on my hands, so I don't need to race through everything. So instead of it being just kind of very boring, straightforward things, we're going, OK, you know what? I'd quite like to do a leg of lamb with this, but I'd like to marinate it. I'd like some rosemary. I'd like some mint in it. Or, you know what, if I'm going to do chicken, why don't I do tandoori style chicken? If I'm going to do ribs, how about if I make my own barbecue sauce? So we really up the game on what's going to happen. Lovely. And are we giving our barbecue counterparts, i.e. Australia and some other countries, a run for their money in the barbecue steaks? I think that way we approach barbecues is changing hugely. I always think that the Americans are kind of the kings of barbecue, really. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being rude to Australians or, or South Africans. But I think that when you look at our, our American counterparts, I think what they've always done is they've barbecued 12 months of the year. You know, I remember when I first started working with Weber about six years ago, then I would get pictures of these guys in Idaho and Montana in the winter, 19 inches of slow snow, minus 14 degrees. And they're barbecuing. I think, what on earth are they doing? But the reality being that actually barbecuing in the winter months is far better than the summer months because the air is colder, the air is more moist. So therefore, all of your cooking is as well. And uh, what new foods are becoming popular on the grill? What, what, sorry, yeah, sorry, uh, uh, what uh, new foods uh, should we be looking out, uh, which are becoming popular on the barbecue? Well, I, th I think one of the things that's changing, of course, is we all tend to eat less meat. And in the past, I think that vegetarian dishes on the barbecue tended to be pretty dull, you know, so it would be a terrible kebab of onion, pepper, courgette, aubergine that tasted of nothing. I think now you can be far more experimental. One of the things I really like to do, I like to roast butternut squash on, uh, on a barbecue. So you get your butternut squash, you cut it in half, scoop out the seeds, and then you hassle back it, which basically means that you cut slices down, but not to the base so it doesn't fall apart. In those spaces, put a little bit of chili, maybe a little bit of garlic, rub a little bit of maple syrup over the top, salt and pepper, and then roast it. And of course, what happens is as it roasts, it starts to open up a little bit. And that delicious sweetness and charring is amazing. When it comes off the barbecue, I like to then sprinkle it with some feta cheese, some fresh mint, some pomegranate. It just makes for an absolutely amazing dish. Sounds delicious just talking about it. And uh, can you tell me more about this research? Uh, saying here, just over half, 50% are agreeing food tastes better from the grill than the oven. It does. I, I think the thing is, if you imagine that, you know, when you're, say, in the winter months, which is a really good example of it, in the winter months, we're all in our centrally heated homes, which therefore is dry atmosphere. So when you cook it, it's all kind of fine. But when you're outside, then you get all of that moisture, all of that kind of cool air circulating. So it makes it better. And the flavour of anything that's cooked over coals is incredible. But even something cooked on a gas barbecue is still really, really delicious. So we get that charring and you start to use things like marinades. And I mentioned sort of technology. Technology is the other thing that really drives forward the, the increase and, and the, the adventurousness of, of the Brits. Yes, yeah, so that brings me on to my next question. What new gadgets are out there? So um, I've, for years, when Weber first brought out their Weber Connect Smart Grilling Hub, I was thinking, okay, is technology really going to help? So the way it works is you download the app and then say, for example, we're going to cook a, a leg of lamb together on the barbecue. So you get your leg of lamb, you put it on the barbecue and then you key into the app what you're cooking and you put the little probe in and you shut the lid and it says, yep, you now have two hours and 13 minutes to wait. 
And so you don't have to kind of sit and keep peeking and losing all the heat out of that barbecue. The app will do it for you. Now, I've got to be honest, I was quite sceptical about it when I first used it, thinking, can this really be the case? But of course, the amount of research and development that goes into creating an algorithm like that is immense. And so you end up with perfect results. If you're cooking a steak, it will even tell you when it's time to flip the steak over. So whether you're cooking something that's a, a, a relatively quick cook, or something that's a long, slow cook, it does it all for you. And it means that your results are absolutely spot on. It sounds mouth-watering just talking about it. And uh, is it best to uh, have the cook, um, you know, your meat well done, just that slightly bit overcooked just to be safe, then undercooked? Um, no. Uh, it, it basically depends what you do. You, you, obviously, you can't undercook chicken uh, because that's kind of dangerous. But I sort of think that if you're cooking something like uh, a piece of beef, piece of brisket, then you want it to be nice and pink in the middle. Um, and again, coming back to the app, if you kind of put the probe and say you want it cooked to be medium rare, it will cook it to medium rare. Um, so it's about knowing what you can and can't cook and or what you can't. So uh, as I say, things like chicken, things like sausages, Things like that, you have to make sure that they're fully cooked through. But something like a piece of beef, then you can still kind of actually have it nice and pink in the middle. And onto the sexes now. Um, no longer a man's thing uh, with women uh, up in the stakes in the barbecue department. It's a really weird one. This I, I, I do sort of feel that the whole kind of the whole gender imbalancing with barbecues. It tends for me. I think that sweeping generalisation that blokes who never ever cook are the same blokes that will take the shirt off and they'll carry their spear, which is which has changed itself into a pair of tongs, and they feel that they are master of the flames. But I think what happens now is, in reality, people who cook, cook. Yeah. It's as simple as that. So whether you're male, whether you're female, it really, really doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think that technology and the style of barbecues makes it very accessible for everybody now. It doesn't. It's not about the horrible, greasy barbecue that you've hidden away in the in the garage. That's good. And uh, what's the best way to uh, kickstart a barbie? To kickstart a barbie? Yeah, to start, it, to start it up. You mean to actually fire it? Yeah, up, or... is there a kind of technique? Any advice is on that? Well, it depends on what you've got, really. I mean, if you if you've got um, if you've got a gas barbecue, obviously it's dead simple. You kind of turn it on. If it's a cold barbecue, then um, chimney stack starters that Weber and lots of other people do, where fundamentally it's an intense um, cylinder. Um, and what you do is you put your fire lights in the bottom, and because it's so intense, then you get that whole heat ready in about 15 minutes as opposed to, say, 35 when you just lay it out. And that just gets it going far more quickly. But the key always is being patient. Remember that your coals aren't ready to cook on when there's flames coming out of them. It's when the flames have died down and the coals are white hot. That's when it's time to cook. Some key advice there. And uh, finally, do you have a favourite song to listen to when yourself are doing the barbecue? What kind of barbecue anthems do you like to listen to on a nice summer day? You see, I, I love, if it's summertime, I do love... A bit of Bob Marley when I'm on the barbecue. Uh, but then also I like a bit of soul classics, a bit of kind of a, a bit of Tavares on there. Uh, even a little bit of Bee Gees should do it for me. Something that's kind of uplifting and fun. Well, great. I'm sure we can get one of them artists on the uh, on the show just right and after. And don't forget, uh, 4th of July's barbecue day as well. I've uh, just uh, realised that as well. So uh, if anyone listening to this interview in July, 4th of July is that time to get the barbecue, barbecue out. Cool. Right, Simon Rimmer, been absolute. Uh, it's an honour to, to have you on the show, and thank you for everything uh, you've uh, you've talked about today on the interview regarding the great British comeback from the barbecue. That's great. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much.